Ed Chapman, and this video cast is going to focus on regulation of the cell cycle. Uh, you can think of the cell cycle as a process that can be switched on or switched off, and it's controlled by signal molecules that work a lot like stoplights. Okay? They're, they're there to control the flow of a process, uh, just like a stoplight controls the flow of traffic. Uh, these signal molecules are going to be controlling the cycling of the cell. And remember, a cell is reproducing when it goes through the cell cycle. And in the cell cycle itself, there are what we call checkpoints, which are points where the system can be stopped or given the go-ahead. So this is the these are the regulation points in the cell cycle. Now, you can represent this concept with something that looks a lot like a thermostat. It's a control system with two checkpoints. We've got the G1 checkpoint and we've got the G2 checkpoint, the two that we're going to be worried about. All right. Now, the G1 checkpoint right here, if a cell does not pass the G1 checkpoint, it remains in a state called the G sub O state, which means it's a non-dividing cell. Most of the cells in your body are in the G sub O state, which means they've reached their full size, uh, they're fully functional, and they're doing their job, but they're not reproducing. They're not growing and reproducing. Uh, if, you, if you think about it, uh, when somebody finishes growing, like say at the end of puberty or the end of the teen years, you've kind of reached your full size, everything's working like it's supposed to be working, and then you kind of operate in a steady state until things start to fall apart when you get old. All right? So passing the G1 step uh, checkpoint right here, when the cell goes past here, that means it can start replicating its DNA during the S phase, all right? And the G2 checkpoint is what stop where a cell can be regulated to prevent it from going through the stages of mitosis, all right? So I think the G, G sub 1 checkpoint is probably the more important of the two. Now, there are such a thing as cyclin-dependent kinases that are the signal molecules that are used to regulate the cell cycle or cell division. And you probably remember the word kinase from the chapter on um, cell signaling. All right. Now, cyclin is probably new, but it's the spelling of it tells you a little bit about what they do. These, these kinases are a group of um, protein kinases that are used by cells to regulate cell division. And these kinases are special because they're inactive unless they're bonded to another molecule called a cyclin. All right, so what happens is if a, if a cyclin-dependent kinase bonds to a cyclin, then it becomes something called an MPF, which is a maturation promoting factor. So this MPF is a signal factor or a signal molecule that can cause a cell to go through the cell cycle. All right, but notice the relationship here the kinase molecule has to bond to the cyclin in order to become active, all right? So the MPF is basically, you can think of it as, the active form of the kinase molecule. Now, what's cool about cyclins and why they're called cyclins, these are proteins whose concentrations change during the cell cycle. So during the G2 phase of the cell cycle, the cyclin concentration in the cytoplasm rises, okay? And during the mitosis phase of the cell cycle, the, the concentration of cyclins falls, okay? So cyclins are accumulating late in the S phase, okay? And they are being taken apart or degraded during mitosis. That's why their concentration goes down here and goes up here, all right? So the cyclin concentrations over time are cycling, all right? And since cyclins are needed to bond with these kinases to promote cell division, you can see how the cyclins are what are controlling cell division. They're the, they're the timing mechanism. Now here's a picture of it. Okay, here we are in the, let's, let's see, where should we start? Let's start down here. All right, so we have a cyclin and we have a kinase. or they, It's a special kind of kinase that's dependent on cyclin, so they call it a cyclin-dependent kinase, hence these three letters. Okay, and if there's cyclin available, they'll combine to become the active form, the MPF. And when there's enough MPF in the cell, then the cell goes through mitosis and starts to divide. But as the cell goes through mitosis, the cyclin is separated from the CDK in a process called degradation, all right? And now, because mitosis is complete, there are no, there's no more MPF, so the cell has to wait until it can build up more cyclins to combine with the CDKs to make more MPF. So hope you guys can see how the presence of the cyclin is what is regulating the cell cycle. 
Thanks for listening. We will stop there.